Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we are back once again with our sponsored monthly video from Plex. And this month we're going to continue a discussion we had last month about the NVIDIA Shield running as a Plex server. A lot of you are wondering about HEVC transcoding and we're going to be exploring that topic with the NVIDIA Shield tonight, but also uh, with a NAS device here, the Synology 218 Plus, and we'll be looking at my WD MyCloud PR2100 uh, because I learned a lot about HEVC transcoding as I was researching this topic, and we've actually got a lot to talk about here. Uh, now, the prerequisite for watching this video is to go back and look at a few of my other hardware transcoding videos so you can get the context of what this is all about, especially as it relates to running a Plex server, uh, because we're going to assume you've watched those already or understand the concepts as we explore this particular uh, subject related to hardware transcoding. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and take a look at HEVC transcoding starting on my WD MyCloud NAS. All right, so we're going to start off here by playing a movie from my WD MyCloud NAS that's in my server room next door. And right now what I'm doing here is playing the movie back at 4 megabits per second at 720p and I selected the AC3 option, but this is the 4K Blu-ray version of the film, and you can see it's having a hard time playing back here. It's really stuttering and not really playing back all that efficiently, and the MyCloud uh, that I'm using does support hardware transcoding. However, the MyCloud doesn't support hardware decoding of 10-bit HEVC files uh, like the one I'm trying to play back right now. So you can see we're getting buffering here in my status indicator. And if we zoom out here and take a look at the CPU, you can see the CPU here is running at full blast and the Plex server is mostly responsible for what's going on here. And I'm going to probably hear from my wife in a minute because I know she's watching some TV upstairs and undoubtedly her experience is being impacted by uh, the amount of CPU load to decode this movie. So to understand how this works, what we're doing is we are reading the video file off the disk in HEVC 10-bit format, and we have to convert it to something that we can stream out. So in order to do this most efficiently, we need to use the hardware decoder to read the video, and then the hardware encoder to encode it and send it out so we're not killing the CPU here. And these are some of the enhancements that the Intel QuickSync video provides on these devices. So let's jump back now uh, to my computer screen and I can show you this in a more visual way. Uh, so right now the video here is playing back, uh, but as you can see, we're not getting the hardware transcode thing here next to the video line for what it's reading. However, it is transcoding the video in hardware to H.264 because that is supported on the chip inside of the WD MyCloud. So what we're seeing here is that, it, again, it can't decode that H.265 video, but it's able to encode it uh, using the hardware. So let's take a look now at uh, the Synology device that I have here on the desk because this one is able to do both the hardware decoding and the encoding. And let's see what that does for performance. So now we're taking a look at the Synology 218 Plus playing back the very same film. Uh, but look at this, it is decoding in hardware as well as encoding in hardware. And if we remember from just a few moments ago, the WD device did not have that HW next to it. So this one is running much more efficiently. And if we jump down to the CPU utilization, uh, check it out. We are significantly lower on the CPU load here doing the exact same task because we're making use of that accelerated uh, Intel hardware decoding and encoding to get this transcode to work properly. So how do you find out what chip you have and what it can do? Well, the best thing you can do is Google it. Uh, so what I did here is I Googled the WD MyCloud PR2100, and as you can see here, it is running, according to WD, with an N3710 processor from Intel. If you take that code and dump it into Google, 
you'll be brought to the Intel specification site. And then when you're there, you want to look for the code name and you'll see that this chip is a Brasswell chip. Uh, so I'm going to pull up a, another page here on my computer's web browser. Uh, this comes from Wikipedia and I'll have a link down below uh, in the video description so you can find this. And the processor inside of the MyCloud is based on the Brasswell Cherry Trail architecture. And if we look here on the chart uh, for the QuickSync support, you'll see that HEVC video decoding is supported, but 10-bit is not supported at all. Now the Synology, though, is running with an Apollo Lake processor, and that chip can decode uh, the HEVC 10-bit video up to 8K. It can't encode it, but it can decode it, and you're able to get things to work better, as we just saw in the demo here. So now let's move on to the NVIDIA Shield, because the Shield is unique. It's not powered by an Intel chip, but it's optimized for hardware transcoding. Let's see if it can tackle that same file. So here we are on the Studio Shield, and as you can see here, we are decoding the video in hardware. So the Shield's processor supports hardware decoding of 10-bit HEVC, and we are transcoding in hardware to H.264. So it's running uh, just as well as it was on the Synology device. I did find it took just a little bit longer for it to spin up, but really it's feeling about the same to me. So as you can see here, the Shield can do a good job uh, with all of the older media you might have and some of the newer media as well. Now, one thing to note on the NVIDIA Shield is that it doesn't have any CPU data inside of its analytics module. So you're not going to see how much of the CPU is being taken up by that hardware transcoding session. Uh, my advice on the Shield is to try not to do too much on it while you're serving media out because uh, the Shield isn't really designed to be a server. And as a result, things that you might be doing locally, like playing games or watching some other media, uh, might drain some of the resources available for the Plex server to operate in. So just take it easy on the Shield as a server. Uh, my advice always is to look at a NAS device to serve your media if you're going to be doing a lot of transcoding sessions. Now, one last thing to talk about, and that is color tone mapping. Uh, this might be hard to see in this video, but the color on screen here doesn't look right. And the reason is, is that we have a 4K Blu-ray movie, and the video is encoded with HDR. So when we're on our fancy 4K displays, it looks beautiful. Uh, but on a transcode, it looks a little less than beautiful right now because it's not doing anything to get the color right during that transcoding process. So this means that if you are uh, transcoding to a laptop with an HDR display, it's not going to be displaying the video properly even with an HDR display. And of course, if you're on a SDR display like my MacBook here, uh, the colors will also look off on it. And all of your 4K Blu-ray files will not look good at all if you are transcoding them. Now, if you're like me and you generally watch those 4K movies just within your home, that's no problem. It will effectively do the HDR playback when you're not doing any transcoding at all. But once that transcoder kicks in, uh, those color issues will kick in as well, and that's something you need to be aware of there. So hopefully that answers some of your questions about uh, HEVC and hardware transcoding. One thing that Plex does not do at the moment is encode in HEVC. So if you've got a 4K movie at HEVC, it will be transcoded to H.264 before it gets transmitted to your device. I don't know if they plan on changing that anytime soon. It might deliver better quality down the road if you are streaming to a mobile device over cellular. But right now, the output uh, is H.264 only. And of course, that means it will be very compatible across many different devices. And hopefully, we'll see a solution to the tone mapping here in the near future so you'll have more flexibility uh, with your 4K files. Uh, what I've been doing for some of my favorite media is I store a 1080p version so I can stream it outside the house. 
And then I also store the 4K version for local playback. And again, that's why having a NAS with a lot of storage uh, can really make a big difference. So hopefully this was a helpful uh, insight into the high efficiency video codec. I'd love to hear your feedback down in the comments below because that will help us come up with more topics for the future. I want to thank Plex for their support of the channel. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rajesh, Logic GR, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.